Hi there, if you wanna learn how to create sound effects, then you are in the right place. In this video, I'll be going over uh, the redesign that I did from the TV show Fire Force. I'll be going over all of the kind of anime sounds, uh, all the plugins, all the processing, all the, and how I created all of the uh, original layers for that redesign. So if you're interested in seeing that, let's get right into our project and get going. All right, so here we are inside of Reaper. And before we just start going into each individual sound, I kind of want to share three uh, kind of concepts or uh, techniques that I kept on going back to for creating this style of anime sounds where it's kind of like in your face and just, yeah, really bold. Um, so the first thing that I, I was doing a lot of is multiband processing. So you'll see me using a lot of like OTT and Uber Loud and other plugins like that. Uh, the other thing is I kept on going back to is distortion. So I, I was using a lot of distortion to really make the sounds very gritty, saturated, and even to get that kind of burning um, feel. So you'll see it, especially for like the bass rumbles and, and the burning sound, stuff like that. You'll see me using a lot of distortion. And then finally, um, uh, a lot of clipping and limiting and just like really pushing sounds to their peak, to their to their max. Um, yeah, to get a lot, a lot of that grit, a lot of that texture out of the sound. So with that said, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for those as we go through this uh, breakdown here. All right, so why don't we start here right at the beginning with this first sound. All right, so that's the first sound that I created. Uh, it's kind of the sound of him uh, blasting or jumping off the ceiling. I, I called it the blast off ceiling. So why don't we jump into the sub project here so we can see how I created that. All right, so the first thing that we hear is some sort of riser to kind of build up to the to the sound. So I used a vital to do that. So it's a very simple patch here. You got a sine wave. Uh, it's down by 12 semitones, and then I put the form scale up a little bit, and then I just assign an LFO directly to it here. All right, so like I said, a very simple patch. There's no effects or anything. It's just a, a, a plain sine wave uh, form scale here, and then pitch down 12, but then I'm pitching it up with an LFO. All right, so that's how I created this sound here. Right, and then after that, it's just a matter of putting a bit of uber loud just to push it up a little bit, and that's it. All right, so let's go to our next section here. So it's kind of like this plopping or something type of sound. And it was kind of similar to the originals. That's kind of what I was going for. So let's see how I created that. All right, so most of this sound was done here inside of Faceplant. So I started off by loading a kind of a sci-fi shot that I had from my um, sci-fi uh, weapons pack. Sounds kind of like this. I think I originally put it into uh, Reaper here and then I kind of chopped it up or, or made it shorter and then I imported it back into here. Right, so you kind of start to have that plopping kind of sound to it, but what was really bringing it out or helping a lot was this filter. Right, so having a lot of this kind of filter sweep here, and you'll see I'm, I'm using other filter sweeps. I'll be using other filter sweeps throughout this redesign. It's kind of a, a key thing in anime sound effects. Probably one of the things I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video, but yeah. So that's doing that. Then I added a bit of disperser here to add, to beef up the low end. Right, so that's kind of the bulk of the sound here. So I just have an LFO here. It's just one LFO and it's being assigned to, you know, stuff like the cutoff here, the filter down here. And that's, I think that's it. All right, so here are the effects or the plugins that I added to uh, kind of beef up this sound. All right, so so far, this is what we have here. Then after that, it was just a matter of adding this burn here at the bottom. So the way that I did this kind of burning sound effect is inside of Faceplant. So right here, I took one of my sampling design files. If you're not sure how to create this, I did a whole video about it, so I'll, I'll have it in the cards above, but it's pretty simple. It's just usually like importing a, some sort of sound or sample inside of Faceplant here or just a sine wave. And then I just basically put on a ton of plugins and then I just modulate them and play around with and just experiment and see what kind of crazy sounds I can come up with. And then I just basically export the file. So that's one of these files here. So if I take off the, what, the processing I have on here, Right, that's the sound I have, and I'm getting that by using the unison and bringing the uh, bringing it up to eight. So I have like eight voices, and then I'm using the pentatonic major scale here. And another key thing here is I'm put, bringing up the spread, so it's a really wide sound. Then I just played it across my keyboard. I probably played down an octave or something like that to get it a bit lower. So first thing I did here is I added a filter. All right, so just to give it that kind of sense of motion, movement, especially just to have more of an impact at the beginning. Then I added some distortion. And then some d disperser. And that's pretty much it. So if we play that here. 
and that's it. So you'll notice here I'm just using a track spacer here, and this is to duck this sound so that it's not masking this kind of plop sound. I want the plop sound to come out, and then I want this sound to come, to come in. So that's how I created this sound here. All right, next we have our spinning sound. Sounds like this. And this was obviously for the character spinning as he's coming down from the ceiling. So this was created pretty simply, nothing too complex here. It's basically just a bunch of weapon swing sounds, as you can see here, that I just put up in a row. So if I play them here. Right, nothing complicated. It's just making sure that they kind of line up so that they are playing in rhythm. And then after that, I added some, uh, on some of them, I added some uh, EQ just to cut out some of the lows because some of them were kind of uh, heavy on the low end. So that's pretty much it that I did in terms of processing. And that's it for this one. Then after that, I added a bit of dual delay here just to give it some sense of space that feel, so that it feels like it's in a, in a room, in a, a warehouse here. So You can hear it especially at the end with the tail. So if I take it off. All right, let's go into our next sound here. And this is the kick. Right, so this is when he's like shooting down to go and, and do the kick. So... Let's see how I created that. So here's that first sound here. All right, and the way I did that again is inside of Faceplant. You'll see some similar patterns here. Again, my sampling design file. And this time I just added a noise to kind of beef it up and make it fill out the frequency spectrum a lot more. So if I play it, that's what it sounds like with the noise. Right, you just get that, that, that higher end hiss and uh, noise out of it. So. Uh, again, a similar thing. I have an LFO assigned to the cutoffs, and that's pretty much it. It's a very, very simple patch. And then uh, I just added OTT here, again, to really to, to beef it up a little bit here. All right, so that is that first hit. Let's go to our second, second part here. When he's starting to move down. So for here, I did a few things. So let's, again, you're going to see another thing here. I'm using Faceplant. Same thing here, sampling my sampling sound design file. Uh, again, uh, this was probably a similar, if not the same patch. I just switched, uh, swapped out the different files here, but I have the same LFO assigned to the cutoff, the cue, um, and, and the pitch here. Right, so for this one, the key thing was mostly just to find the right file that kind of sounded cool or nice. Um, so I got this kind of one with like a lot of this higher end mush if you will or fl fluid kind of thing um i mean I you could have i could have done different things i could have done different sounds but that that was what i did there uh, after that it's just a matter of adding some uber loud just to boost the mids and the the lows and then track spacer here again just to make sure that it doesn't mask the bass rumble here right so when the bass rumble comes in i want this to kind of duck so that's what that is doing here so all together with these two here All right, let's go to our bass rumble sound here, which is right here. It's like the fire burning. Let's see how I did that. So I'm going to take off all of my effects here on my chain. All right, so for this burn sound, I created all inside of Faceplant again here. I started off with a noise oscillator. And you can see I basically added a bunch of effects here. I'm just modulating them with different things. So the first thing is here at the LFO. Uh, this first one where there's three peaks. This is more for the transient, so I want something that had that's kind of transient heavy, right? So you can hear it kind of. Uh, it's kind of like this laser sound. So I'm doing that with. So that's being assigned to uh, the frequencies here for the ring modulator as well as for the slice EQ. So that's how that is doing that. The next one here, this LFO, is also for a sweep. So this one is being applied to the the filter here, as well as the mix for the ring mod and the slice EQ. And the mix for my multi-pass here. And if I look at my multi-pass in here, yeah, it's just a shaper, so some distortion on the low end. So if we take these off and listen to them one at a time to see what they're doing. Right, it's just shaping the sound so that it kind of has this laser sound, but then it's also sweeping um, and down with the, the, the low pass to make sure that I'm cutting out all the highs. After that, it's just a matter of adding some effects here. Right, so once I had that sound, I cut out the beginning, uh, so I didn't have the transient. I just kept the, the burning sound at the end. And then I just added a few more effects here. So if we play it here. And 
that's it. That's how I created this sound. All right, our next sound here is the impact sound. So let's go into our sub project here and see how I did that. All right, so there's two parts to this sound. I have this first impact and then the second impact. So let's see how I did this first impact here. Again, I was inside of Faceplant. And for this uh, sound, again, I did a sample here, a design file. Uh, for this one though, for this specific sample, it was one that was like very kick uh, heavy. So a lot of like kick drums and kicks and stuff like that, that I had designed and created. And I kind of just put it in, in, in that I put in there and just uh, exported out. So they're very transient heavy. All right, so if I take off my effects here, if I just play it. Again, I'm just using a unison here. So if I take it off. That's what it sounds like with the unison here. I have it set to five pentatonic major. Right, so it's a bit more noisy, which is good for this style. Then I add disperser. Right, and of course the shaper here is really adding a lot of to the sound. After that, of course, it's just adding OTT and the limiter. Right, so that's this sound here. Right, so once I had exported it, just shaped it to, to, with a fade out. And then for the second sound here, it sounds like this. So I'm gonna take off my Uber Louds here in OTT and let's go inside of Faceplant again. Uh, same, same thing here, it's the same exact same file, same exact same patch, I just chose a different section in the file and I probably played higher on my keyboard, right? So I, get, I got a, a higher sound and then I just added some, uh, some processing. So here we go, this is what it sounds like. All right, so once I had this uh, this sound done, uh, I felt like it was kind of dry, so, if, so it would have sounded like this. Like it felt like the, it was missing the sense of space, so I just added a dual delay here, kind of the similar technique that I did for uh, when the character is spinning down. So I added a dual delay to make it feel like it's in a room. I did the same thing here, uh, but I modulated the mix here so that it's only really coming in towards the end. Right, and it just makes it feel a lot bigger like that. All right, so let's have a listen to what we've gotten through so far. So those are all the sounds we've done so far. Let's keep going here uh, with this other low burn here. I got another one, so let's have a listen to this. So this is a really long file. Let's see how I did it. All right, so inside of Faceplant here, I loaded a sample, and this is a, an earthquake sample that I created. If you're not sure how to create these, I'll put a link up uh, in the cards above on the top right corner, because I did a whole video about how to create earthquake sound effects. And basically, I just took one of those files that I created and dropped it in here. And that was my starting point. So as a starting point, it already sounds good. You're already getting that character out of the sound. It's not thick enough though, so that's why you added a unison. Again, same technique as before. Pentatonic major is what I used. Then I added a filter and distortion. Right, so that's really bringing out uh, the sound. After that, we're loud. And this I'm actually only using towards the end uh, as I'm processing it and modulating it here to bring out uh, the highs at the end here. So if we just play right now, this is what we have. Right, so you'll notice I'm doing uh, two modulations. One is the volume. So I'm, I'm bringing down the volume on uh, for this sound here right here as the character is falling and moving away from the camera. So I want to make it feel like it's getting a little bit quieter, not too, too quiet. And then as it's coming back here, then that's when I'm bringing up uh, this uber, uh, uber loud here and I'm bringing up all the highs. So that's why it sounds like really bright and cracky here. It's the exact same sound file, but before you couldn't hear it, now suddenly you hear it as I'm bringing that out. All right, so that's that burning sound. That's how I created that. It's uh, relatively simple. Here you'll notice I have a few uh, other things here, which is the uh, track spacer, probably for the sounds down here. I wanted them to duck uh, for, especially for the impacts as they're happening, right? I don't want this burn to be uh, at the forefront. I want these impacts to come out. So that's what track spacer is doing there. It's just ducking this burning sound. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, here I have a simple riser. This is for 
uh, right before the SmackDown, I think. So the way that I did that is a patch inside of Vital. So let's jump into Vital to see how I created this sound. All right, so this I did with using a white noise sample here. I brought it down 12 semitones and I have a filter on here. And it's a pretty simple patch in, in that I'm only using one LFO and it's just a ramp LFO, three seconds. Uh, I played around with the timing just to get it right with the picture, but that's it. So th this is being assigned to a few different things. So one is gonna be here. So my effect, so I have uh, EQ that is gonna be sweeping through as well as the filter here. This is just a comb filter. Uh, uh, same thing, it's just sweeping through here. That's it, so pretty simple patch, just one one LFO and then assigning that to parameters so that it sweeps up, and that's it. Uh, after that, I don't even think I added any, yeah, I didn't add any other processing, so that's it. It's just straight up like that. All right, so that is the, the riser. After that, I have our final uh, attack when they hit the ground here. Let's have a listen to this. So two very similar hits, and let's see how I, how I did these. So inside of Faceplant here, I have, again, my Earthquake sound file. Same one as before, maybe I took a different one. I think it might have been a different one here. Um, but yeah, I think it's the exact same patch as before. I have my filter, my uh, distortion disperser. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, it's just a bit of processing here, so let's have a listen to what this sounded like. As you can see here, I'm doing similar modulation here to follow the burn, especially to follow the characters as they're falling down. So I have my volume going down. I also have an, a low pass filter going down. So let's have a listen and look at that. All right, and down here we have another similar sound. You can see here, I did the exact same thing. It's the same exact same sound file. I just put it a little bit uh, further in here. So I chose a different start off point, a different offset, uh, but I, I, everything else is the exact same. And I did a bit of processing here. Same, same, same thing, probably a copy and paste of the other one with OTT and Transient Shaper. So these two together. Right, and let's have a listen to how it works with the burn as well. Right, so pretty good. Now what you might notice is that right at the at the bottom here where they're like the furthest away from the camera, you start to have this kind of dead space. So what I want to add here was a whoosh, and that's exactly what I did here, especially to emphasize the impact when they hit the ground. So that is the whoosh. This is from my ultimate whoosh pack. So uh, this is my most recent sound pack that I published. I just took one of these whooshes that I had in there, and let's see what I did to it. So... Uh, for this specific one, I think I didn't do too much processing, if any at all. Um, yeah, no processing. I just cut it up uh, or just added a, a little fade here, and that's it. And then you can see I have a track spacer to make sure it's not masking with other things. But together with uh, the sound here. So without it. And then with the burn. Right, so you can kind of see how each element is kind of interacting with each other. They're also they're, they're following kind of the same curve to match what's going on on screen. And then they're just making sure that everything's kind of coming in and out as they're supposed to. So all together, let's have a, a full listen to the redesign here. See if you can pick out everything that we talked about, everything that we went over. Here we go. All right, so I hope you found this video useful and valuable. It was one of these videos that was requested. I had uh, two or three requests from different people to see if I could do something like that. So hopefully you found that informative and uh, you can use that in your own sound design. If you have any comments, questions, leave them down below. And just a reminder to grab the Sound Designer Starter Pack. I'll have a link in the description if you want to get those 900 sound effects for free. And if you're interested in seeing another anime sound effect video, I'll make sure to have one on screen here. I think that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.